Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here in our new New York City studio on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Actually, on the balcony, looking out over the floor. Great location, the market's behind us. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're excited by bringing this New York access point, the Cube East, we're calling it. That's where all the network action is, local to New York, but there's tons of events happening. Of course, Silicon Valley and Boston, part of it. We've got a great guest here who was also giving a tech talk upstairs, part of the NYC Wired community collaboration. Tech Talks here, obviously CUBE interviews and ongoing coverage. And everything is saying, Credo AI founder and CEO is here with me. Great to see you, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, John. So you just gave a Tech Talk upstairs in the 1792 private room with a bunch of thought leaders and experts and potential customers, um, but really it was a community event. Um, love the engagement there. Uh, your presentation was in probably what is becoming the hottest area that we're seeing on SiliconANGLE and our research coverage is, you know, if you asked me four years ago if um, governance was a big deal, I would have said, oh, of course it is in that small little vertical, but now with AI, everyone's talking about it. So um, you guys are doing something pretty compelling in risk management, governance, and really the key to AI is actually having the scale to make data work. Sounds easy on paper, but there's a lot of work to go in. So explain what Credo does, and we'll get into some of the cool things you presented. Yeah, absolutely. So Credo AI is world's leading AI governance platform. And what that means is we help you with three things. One is we help you with oversight of all the new AI capabilities like generative AI. Secondly, we help you with risk understanding and management. And third is we help you get to compliance with the plethora of AI regulations and standards that are showing up in the market. We you know, started the company about four and a half years ago, okay. coined the category AI governance, and for the past four and a half years, we've been at the forefront of not only delivering a standardized software that helps companies with this oversight and accountability, but also helping companies use governance as a competitive advantage to win more business, to retain customers longer, and to really build that trust uh, in this very dynamic AI ecosystem. You know, I want to get into the whole speed advantage yeah. of how real-time insights and real-time value yeah. it seems to where AI is accelerating. Everything's about accelerated computing, accelerated value. You know, NVIDIA talks about that. I think they're right on categorically. Yeah. Um, but first, what was the origination story? How did it all start? Um, take us through where you guys are at, funding, customers, but give us the origination story and an update. Yeah, so John, you know, I'm literally, <laughs> Credo AI is not like an idea that one day I woke up and said, let's do it, right? It is actually the outcome of a multiple different things that have op happened over the past 20 years in my career. So I'm a hardware engineer by training, spent early years at a company called Qualcomm, yep. building cell phone chips, <laughs> uh, and then moved into product management and then into robotics, and this was way back yep. like 13 years ago when ImageNet came to being, yeah, yeah. and we were like, really trying to think about how do you build really computer vision models on a small form factor but very powerful yeah, yeah. Uh, form factor like mobile compute and, and connectivity. And I think that was like a little bit of an aha moment because when you have these robotics applications working alongside humans in manufacturing plants, physical safety, you have these collaborative robots working alongside yeah. human, physical safety becomes a yeah. pretty big thing. So 13 years ago, I started to really think about what does AI safety mean, and what is the evolution, especially as a lot of these applications yeah. become more, I would say, powered by machine learning application. Fast forward, uh, was hired into Microsoft to really think about cognitive services, which were a set of services from facial recognition to speech to NLP, and what does commercialization of those look yeah. like. And as you can imagine, the scale and speed of AI yeah. has not slowed down at all. Yeah. And so we started to see the challenges if you didn't have yeah. the oversight and the compliance requirements early on in your MLOps pipeline. So, you know, the past 13 years, it started out with physical safety yeah. of humans, then moved into digital safety as these very massively powerful machine learning systems were coming to being. Yeah. And so the key question was, is there a software solution that can actually help companies not only be accountable, but make sure that there is standardized oversight yeah. across these very powerful systems. And so Credo AI yeah. was born from this massive pain point that I saw in the market. And you know, once you yeah. see a problem yeah. as a founder, you can't unsee it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was like, let's go you know, yeah. let's bring um, not only the software horsepower, but the AI uh, horsepower to make sure these systems are yeah. safe and responsible. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, you know, what, what are blockers today, once they're removed, 
like I said, things accelerate. So let's get into yeah. the product and what you yeah. guys are offering. Um, what's the core problem that you're solving? Unblocking the, the, the grinding out of all the pr procedures? Does it actually bring um, a service model to, say, CFOs, who's your target persona? I mean, take us through, because this is an area that categorically is growing in relevance, yeah. and, and, and it's different by company. Yeah, absolutely. What, how would you talk about who your persona is, who do you sell to, yeah. who's the value uh, user? Yeah, so John, the best way to think about Credo AI software is we help organizations first and foremost adopt new AI capabilities fast with eyes wide open yeah. because they can understand the risk of these powerful systems very quickly. And then the second is we obviously help them get to compliance where needed. So the key buyer for us is a chief data officer or a chief information officer within an organization who is responsible for your AI footprint and AI center of excellence. Yeah. And as you can imagine, our platform really is trying to bridge the oversight deficit that exists between your AI ops, your LLM ops pipeline, yeah. and your business pipelines, the traditional governance risk and compliance. Yeah. So our buyers in the past four and a half years have been very focused on making sure that um, the problem for them is, I know that AI can get me all these ROI and bring me all these top line growth, but how do I do so in a responsible way by building trust, by understanding risk, and yeah. being compliant along the way? What's interesting is that the chief CDO, chief data officer, is usually that person who's been handling a lot of the data science, analytics, the data engineering. Now with um, data and generative AI opening up more surface attack vectors on the surface area, you're seeing security. Yeah because security is bubbled up into a data risk management problem. So security now is involved, so sometimes CISOs. So this is now not a department. Yes. So I want to get your thoughts on, on how you see that evolving because there's a CDOs with very, almost, almost a decade in of, I would say, mature learning yeah. and practices. How does that flex now with Gen AI? Because now the stakeholder is getting horizontally uh, across the organization. Why? Because the observation space for data is expanding. Yeah. So it's not the analytics department anymore. Oh yeah, I got the pipeline, cool, check. But now, it's programmable. Exactly. So those robots we're once worried about is just all software. Yeah. And that could impact the business model. Oh, absolutely, John. I think you've hit the nail on the head. One of the challenges with artificial intelligence, which, by the way, even the most advanced AI company is going through, it's a very multi-stakeholder initiative because there are so many different kind of challenges within these AI systems from security to privacy to really thinking about socio-technical yeah. impacts, right? So one of the things that we have found in Credo AI is even though the buyer can be a chief data officer or a CISO or a CIO, our sales cycles are very multi-stakeholder, so you do need the risk and compliance perspective, you need the data science perspective. And I think that also, yeah. the exciting part of that is that just shows yeah. that the surface area uh, not only has increased, but because of the power this technology is going to bring to a business, we still have to yeah. unlock a lot of ROI from it, but the power of this technology is so massive yeah. that you do need all these different expertise coming yeah. in to solve big challenges. I saw Pamela Gupta, who's from Connecticut, she was in your session upstairs, I interviewed her. I like her line because she's like, I'm a consultancy, I teach them how to fish, I don't catch the fish for them. Yeah. I get that, her role, yeah. but she's smart. She brought up a good point that I didn't think of and made me connect a few dots in the, on the fly, real time, was that you know some of these new questions bring up new risks. Oh, absolutely. So now you got the models, the LLM, whether it's computer vision or other, the, the fact that there's no answer yet, mm -hmm. is people like almost don't want to know. I don't want to know, yeah. don't even say the word. Yeah. Like they look the other way, they're trying to figure it out. It's so new. Yeah. So AI is opening up more risks. So when you go to a risk compliance department, when they hear risk, they have to go down that door is yeah. open. They got to go to completion. So you guys built a platform that does that, helps that. Yeah. What's changed that you guys can bring to the table? Because I see a lot of you know pain yeah. on uh, how do I get my arms around it to, okay, what do I do and who, who's going to own it? Yeah. Uh, and what's coming up a lot is this idea of um, not accountability, but you know, raising your hand and saying, I own this. Someone has to own it. And so at some point, someone has to run your platform. Yeah. Who? <laughs> yeah, so right now it depends upon the AI maturity of the business. So most of the organizations, I would say, it is the chief data officer or chief AI officer yeah. who runs our platform. Yeah. They are the budget authority. But again, John, very important to understand because 
because of the socio-technical nature, yeah. you literally do need to have data science and you need to have risk compliance policy actually using this platform. And yeah. this is where yeah. our integrations play a massive role because we are integrated into all your AI infrastructure and yeah, yeah. business infrastructure so that we are making it easy yeah. for all these multiple stakeholders to just work together. I, I do want to address something that you were, you know, you were very, um, I, I think very well put, put together is one of the, things with governance right now is these emergent risks. Yeah. And as AI experts, one of the things we do at Credo AI, and that's one of the reasons why we are the leaders, is we work very closely with standard setting bodies, yeah. with institutions like Stanford High and others, to make sure that not only what's happening in the regulatory ecosystem we can codify yeah. within our platform, but us as AI experts, yeah. we are red teaming these systems, testing these systems, trying to figure out new emerging things that we can very quickly codify yeah. so a risk and compliance stakeholder <laughs> does not have to. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love what you just said there, red teaming, and that's a security concept, but red teaming is important because you're not doing it for just security mm -hmm. testing. You're doing it to understand um, the nuances of how the game is being played. And Anon from ICE here, who you know, um, runs the technology, he and I were talking, and this is the, th the theme, and I want to get your reactions, because I think people are seeing this now, but I, I want to over-amplify it, because you can't play a game you don't understand. Yeah. So it's like playing chess and knowing know what, not knowing what checkmate is. And so you got to play the game, so people need to get their hands dirty, and what's interesting is that you're doing two things very hard. You're bringing technology stack to the table with a solution, but the cultural process mismatch has to be addressed. That means the front end and back end theaters are yeah. evolving very rapidly. I've never seen this in my career. I've seen many ways of innovation. Yeah. It's either a front end or a back end innovation. Cloud was back end, web was front end, mobile was front end, cloud was back end. Now both environments, yeah. which means it's harder to get it right because you got to do process culture and full tech stack yeah. managing data availability and new new configurations, how things are, resources are allocated in the in the three layers of the stack. Yeah. I mean, do you agree? I mean, and 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 because you have to do it. If you don't you do it, to. you can't. I love that framing, John, and that's a framing actually we've used since the beginning of Credo AI. We always talk about how can software solve three layers of trust problem. The first layer of trust is with the ecosystem. Do you understand the regulations? Do you actually in, sort of inform those regulations and standards and can you bring that in? The second layer of trust absolutely spot on is the people and processes. Because within an organization, unfortunately the traditional way your you know, software development life cycle now needs to completely evolve for AI ops as an yeah. example, right? So what is the, not only cultural aspect, but also the literacy aspect that you need to infuse into your people and process, very important. And then the third is a tech stack, right? Yeah. So this is where Credo AI, we are very focused on the AI use case level governance because the, especially when you think about these foundation models which are very yeah. dual purpose, they can apply to different use cases. And so you have to think about, okay, what's the Im impact, but then also trace it back to the models that's powering it, the data sets yeah. that's powering it, the people behind the problem, <laughs> how it is structured, what does the business yeah. care about? So there's like these layers of trust yeah. that you have to start building. Tell me what you're most excited about right now yeah. because you got a great opportunity. It's an area that's been, you know, evolving. It's been your, your career. You saw the problem. I love that line. And once you see a problem, you can't remember. That's so true. It's like stuck yes, in your head. You got exactly. to solve that. And it's a big market and it's hot right yeah. now. And it's super relevant technically yeah. for how data is structured. And so all this is built in at the beginning, not bolted on after. So you're, it, I love your mission. What, but what are you most excited about? Yeah. What energizes you? I think artificial intelligence and how it is going to help humans become more productive is what energizes me. But I do want to emphasize the only way we can get to that outcome is if we are using responsible AI. Yeah. So this is where Credo AI's role in this ecosystem, how do we yeah. become the seal of good artificial intelligence is so critical because all the benefits, the upsides that we are going to see with AI, yeah. whether it is coding gains, whether it is productivity, that I have more free time, all that is going to be possible only if you can trust this technology. Yeah. Yeah. And the trust actually does, doesn't happen, yeah. it has to be yeah. earned. And so what we are seeing is right now, the mission that we are on to become the seal of good AI governance, it is one of the most critical things to build that infrastructure yeah. of trust for AI. Yeah, you guys uh, got a great tech stack, love the solution. Give us the business update, how's it going? Yeah. 
you guys ha you feel good about where you're at revenue wise customer funding give us a Give us an update on the business and business model. Yeah, so we started the company in 2020, so four and a half years in. We are growing very rapidly as a team. We've three x this year. Uh, one of the core things that we are excited about is the kind of investors we've been attracting to our business. We've raised about $42 million so far with investors like Sands Capital, Decibel, AI Fund, Mozilla, FPV, and others who are really not only excited about the potential of artificial intelligence, but understand the power of responsible AI. Uh, we serve global 2,000 companies in multiple sectors, financial yeah. services, healthcare, pharma, government. Some of our customers include yeah. MasterCard, Northrop Grumman, Booz Allen. Our partners include McKinsey and Databricks. So as you can imagine right now, there is a need in this AI ecosystem for a good governance, yeah. a trusted governance partner, yeah. and Credo AI is that for the ecosystem. Thanks so much for coming on the Cube here. What do you think about our NYSE studio, QB, this access point to the network? You know, I'm just so excited <laughs> because this is where magic is going to happen <laughs> and giving us, you know, startups like Credo yeah. AI a chance to come and yeah. share our story. Hopefully yeah. one day we are going to be listed here. Well, I'll see you back in the Bay Area. I'm heading back tonight. Yes. It's been a great media week. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, great thank you so you. much, John. All right. I'm John Furrier of theCUBE. We're bringing it down. All the action to you from the New York Stock Exchange floor in, you know, in collaboration with NYSC, Brian Bauman, and the Wired community. Again, this is going to be our East Coast hub, our access point, point of presence, super node, all the smart people here in New York connecting to Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.